You are welcome, dear friend, to this exhortation of our five spiritual weapons. I'm Dr. Prosper Tetido in the United Kingdom. These five spiritual weapons are very important for us, even as Christians, in our Christian lives. And I'll be dwelling on each of them as we go along. It's by prayer that the Lord will bless you and cause you to be strong if, and to apply these weapons in Jesus' name. Amen. In the word of God, we know that we also have missiles. And missiles, as we know, have warheads and rockets. There are three warheads of authority. That's the blood of Christ, the name of Jesus, and the word of God. I'll be talking about five spiritual weapons in this presentation. And you discover these five weapons enable us to launch the warheads and also exercise that authority in Jesus' name. And these five weapons are prayer, one, Two is praise, three is preaching, four is binding and losing, and five is confession. Now the first one is prayer. I'd like to state that the devil fears a praying church. And also do not let the prevailing evil in society stop you from praying. And there are some key verses that I'll be referring to as we go along, which are even as you see. Now, prayer is very important for us as Christians. And as Apostle Paul concludes, pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere as in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 13 to 18, we talks about the whole armor of God and it's based on the components of a Roman soldier's battle dress and equipment. Now, the devil will always try to put obstacles in our way, even as Christians, and as a church, the Amalekites were blood relatives of the Israelites, but hated them bitterly. And as Israel journeyed through from Egypt to the land of Canaan, Amalek attacked, and Moses ordered Joshua to lead the Israelite army, while he, his brother Aaron, and brothers-in-law, her, climbed a hill that overlooked the battlefield. On the hilltop, Moses did something unusual. What did he do? He raised his shepherd's staff into the air. I may ask you, what do you have in your hand? Raise it and God will use it. And as long as Moses held up the staff in his hands, the Bible records that the Israelites had the advantage, but whenever he dropped his hand, what happened? The Israelites were being defeated and Amalekites had the advantage. So the lifting of the staff in Moses' hand, therefore, depicts intercession for divine deliverance. So intercession is a very important part of our prayer. Soon, Moses' arms became what? Weak and tired, and he could no longer hold them up. So Aaron and Hur found a stone for him to sit on. Then they stood on each side of Moses, holding up his hands. So his hands held steady until sunset. As a result, Joshua overwhelmed the army of Amalek in battle as we find in Exodus chapter 17, verses 12 to 13. So at times, the prevailing evil in society 
may weary our soul. And in recent times, across the world, evil has prevailed in so many ways. Even before, during the pandemic, and after the COVID pandemic. And we may even as sometimes be tempted to give up. In spite of this, dear friend, never stop praying. Let us not lower the staff of prayer for ourselves, our family, our nation, and the world. If some battles are too large to fight on our own, seek the help of other praying believers. It's a teamwork. Jesus Christ, he chose 12 disciples. So also have praying believers whom you can pray with. And I've noticed that in my life, in intercession, I've learned a lot about experience, the prayer support of other believers. So I recommend that for you. The other scriptures, which I've not read, but you can refer to 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 6, Psalm 4, 141, verse 2, Lamentations chapter 2, verse 19, and Exodus, which I refer to, chapter 17, verses 12 to 13. But let's note one thing also, that Daniel also did, which helped, as in Daniel chapter 10, verses 12 to 14. So we move to the next weapon, which is praise. Hallelujah. And the various scriptures are there, which I'll be referring to, but I'll not read all of it. The Bible says that God is enthroned in the praises of his people, as in Psalm 22, verse 3. To praise means to honor, to glorify, and to commend and extol the attributes of someone or something. When we praise God in word or song, it enthrones him over our lives, displacing the powers of darkness that may affect us. The psalmist states of God's people, God is high and holy, and his praises fill their mouths. For they are shouted praises and their weapons of war. These warring weapons will bring vengeance on the nations and every resistant power to bind kings with chains and rulers with iron shackles. Praise-filled warriors will enforce the judgments decreed against their enemies. So praises enter the courts of heaven and that's where the battle is won so that heaven brings judgments and that judgment is enforced on the war field or the war front. So praise, especially when sacrificial, not only blesses the Lord we love, but also shakes the spiritual realm. When the apostle Paul and the prophet Silas preached the gospel in the city of Philippi, the authorities arrested them, beat them severely, and threw them into prison. Satanic powers had stirred up the city because Paul had confronted a demonic spirit and cast it out of a slave girl, as we see in Acts chapter 15, verse 22, and also verse 32, and also Acts chapter 16, verses 16 to 20. Now, this is interesting. You always find the devil fighting you when you stand for God, because his manifesto is stated in John 10, 10, which says, the thief come and know, but to steal and kill and to destroy. But Jesus Christ has come to give us life and give, him, give us in abundance. What happened? 
when they were beaten and they were bruised. And their feet were in stocks. Paul and Silas prayed and praised God anyway. Sacrificial praises get heaven's attention. God will bend his ears to the sound of his children, praising him despite their circumstances. And as someone says, circumstances reveal our character. They do not make us. And suddenliness comes at the midnight hour after we have exhausted all hope of a breakthrough. If we keep praising God, hallelujah. And I've experienced that in my midnight hour on some occasions. And note that Paul and Silas praise God in the prison, not for the prison. It's important. Over the 16 years or more in full-time caregiving, one minister realized that it was not easy. Maybe you are a caregiver for a relative, a spouse. Hold out. Jesus is with you. And he will give you praise and worship, even in your prayer life, which is a powerful weapon that will overcome evil powers. So the third, the next is preaching. Preaching is important. We are human, but we don't wage war as humans do, writes the Apostle Paul. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Verses 3 to 5, which you can refer to. Preaching is one such weapon. When it contains the word of God, it's soaked in prayer and delivered in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. It will break oppression and change wrong mindsets. If truth is preached consistently over years, not only will it transform lives, but the spiritual atmosphere of a place can also change. Demonic powers tormented by the truth will actually leave an area. And this we see in Luke chapter 4, verses 32 to 34, where Jesus' teaching caused a demon to beg him to go away. And this can happen in your life too. Preaching should include inspiring stories and illustrations, but also a generous amount of scripture. If done in love, agape love, such preaching will be powerful, convincing, and blessed by the Holy Spirit. So we move on to the next, which is the fourth, is binding and losing. And these are the scriptures which we find on this Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 8. Second Kings chapter 6, verses 15 to 17. And Revelation chapter 1, verse 20. Binding and losing may sound strange, but it is a powerful rock weapon. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Jesus promised. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. These keys represent authority and are given to those who believe that Jesus is the son of God and savior of the world. Keys open 
and lock doors. To bind means to forbid or lock. To lose means to permit or unlock. So in the original Greek translation of Jesus' words, the phrase actually says, whatever you bind on earth shall be, having been bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth shall be, having been loosed in heaven. This means that we are to discern what heaven is doing, align with it, and enforce it through binding and losing. While this may at times involve using the terms, I bind, I lose in prayer, it is far broader than that. For example, preaching of the gospel can lose a person from sin or casting out a demon will bind its effect in a person's life. Sometimes we bind or lose something when we move in the opposite spirit. So this is important to note. And whether it is practical action, moving in the opposite spirit, or using the phrases in prayer, binding and losing are powerful keys to unlock heaven's will on earth. So we're moving on to the fifth, which is but last but not the least weapon, which is confession. Fight the good fight of faith, says the Bible. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. As in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Now, the word Christ here means the anointed one, the promised Messiah who would save the world, restore it to paradise, and restore humankind back to God. So, that is the good confession, which is the confession that Jesus Christ is Lord and the Christ sent from God. When we confess that, and when we confess his word, it forces satanic powers to flee because God has exalted his word above his name. And his word shall not go and come back void. It will accomplish that which pleases him and prosper in the very thing for which it is sent. The Bible commentator says, our confession of Jesus Christ as Lord invites and receives his presence and power over all evil whenever we face it. It is not just any confession that accomplishes this, but that which agrees with God's word. So the Greek word for confession in the verse above, which is what we, we've read is basically meaning the homology, which means to say the same thing as another. When we say the same thing about Jesus as Father, God says it saves us. When we say the same thing as the Lord says in scripture or by prophetic revelation, it will overcome the enemy. If we are depressed, God's word says the joy of the Lord is our strength. If we are weary, his word says he will give us rest. If we are sick, his word says he is the Lord who heals us. Death and life says the Bible are in the power of the tongue. The right confession always brings life into any situation. Confession is the same as declaration. So let us continue this potent component of prayer, confession. 
getting near the end, finally. Notice the enormous point about these five weapons. Apart from uh, some aspects of binding and losing, they all are launched through the mouth. In addition, they are only effective as weapons if the warheads are attached. Prayer in the name of Jesus, confession or preaching, using the word of God, and so on. Note too that fasting, while not being a weapon, greatly boosts the effectiveness of the weapons we have mentioned. It is like putting super rocket fuel in the missiles. In spiritual warfare, we are to be neither devil focused nor fearful. We are to be God focused and have more confidence in our Father's ability to bless and protect us than the devil's ability to harm us. But the Lord is faithful, promises the Bible. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one, according to 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you. And may his grace even be upon you now and always. Even as you use these five weapons of our spiritual battle. Prayer, praise, preaching, binding and losing, and confession. Amen.